Welcome back, everybody, to the next episode of the Colonial Presbyterian High School podcast. And uh, this is Luke, and today we have a very special guest, and it is the man himself, the chief boss, Adam Reck. Hello, hello. Filling, Filling in. in. Yes, Molly is in the air tropics, <laughs> Arizona. <laughs> and uh, we got Mr. Adam breaking it down here. We're in the youth room, because we always try to switch everything up in our locations and locales. Makes a great podcast studio, the youth room. It does. We got Becca. Becca's here, working as well. How about that game last night, though? Oh, <laughs> I turned it off. Really? I turned it off midway through the third quarter. We had, we left the Super Bowl party, went home, tired. Did you go to bed before well, it was I over? Cleaned up, went was getting ready for bed, and saw saw all these tweets. I'm like, I missed the greatest game ever. Overtime, <laughs> the goat. Oh, it was tremendous. No, oh. I actually, as much as I don't like the Patriots, I um. That was like worth. I was like, okay, they deserve that. That's amazing. Yeah. I don't have anything else to say about that. Yeah. Anyway, go Falcons. <laughs> so, um, that's just the uh, sports segment of this podcast. Exactly. That's for Adam. Adam said, so, okay, if I'm going to be in it, we have to say talk a little bit about sports. It's you and Molly don't. You don't have this segment with Molly. No, She's Molly just looks at me. <laughs> she was, yeah, no, can't get that ever out of her. All right. So uh, yesterday I did a lesson. Um, I was the speaker this time, I guess. So trying to do too much talking here on the podcast, but uh, it was on what we called the gospel in dinosaurs. Now, I think it's funny because I'm, look, I'm, I'm looking, kind of scanning over the two questions we have here, and I kind of know where this is going because I did call this lesson gospel in dinosaurs as a, like a marketing scheme <laughs> 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 to get people more interested um, in the, that we might be talking about dinosaurs, which we did very briefly. But it was, I guess, generally more a the gospel and science. Yeah, um, was more was, of the. I was expecting more uh, clips from Jurassic Jurassic yeah. World. <laughs> All the yeah, the T Rex kind of ripping through like yeah. village and whatnot. Um, Chris Pratt and his raptor friends. <laughs> but uh, we w- kind of went over as a large overview of science, which I'm I'm glad that a lot of people kind of held on with me there. Um, each one of those slides that I talked about could probably be broke broken down into a Mm -hmm. week's worth of lectures um but for the most part great response kids i think you guys really enjoyed it a lot of you came up and told talk to me afterwards and to send to send you the slide so if there's anyone else in the youth that would like to have the powerpoint please let me know in the group me chat or something like that um that you would like to have the slides because i am sending them out and then adam you kind of popped in yeah yeah you were there pretty much the whole time almost i think yeah yeah i wanted to learn yeah. <laughs> Did you learn anything? Or were you like, I already got all this? No, man. It was uh, it was it was good. There were some things where I was like, Yeah, I've I've heard that before in the uh, you know, um the 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 word, um, the yom, um mm-hmm. for for day or for ep for an epoch or a, a time of of a time frame. Um I'd heard that before and so we've you know in, in teaching with, with middle schoolers and whatnot, we've talked about that before. Um, but, but one of the things was, was the Job, how you brought Job into it. something mm-hmm. that, that I hadn't really explored before. And so it was, it was cool to hear, hear through that made me want to read more about more in Job. Right. Because for me, it's like you read, you know, there's like the first couple chapters of Job where it's like, oh, there's some things are differing and everything um, It's where all this stuff happens to Job. And I feel like the last part of Job, it's just all like, it's tremendous. It's, it's tremendous, but it's also kind of a little back and forth of like his friends are like, "This is what you did wrong." This, and he's like, "I am not, I'm not guilty. I'm innocent." And then right. he finally, then you get that last part where where God's like, "Where were you when mm-hmm. I was doing that stuff?" But it was cool to even see that not just as a rebuke of the Lord, but as a as a revelation of His creation story and yeah. everything. There seems to be a lot that the Lord has, has done, and 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 wasn't it necessarily specifically told to us. In the scriptures, but the Lord says, you. Ca- I mean, almost you can't really fathom a lot of the things that I do. Um, as much as I long for you to discover and wants us to be a part of who he is, it's like there's some parts. How can you understand what it means to command the morning? Yeah. Um, but I think the, the main point, even out of all those different discussions, because some of that stuff can be debated, especially with the, I've seen yom, um, the word yom, because then people will point to in Genesis where it says, and there is, there is morning and there was evening, mm-hmm. um, being a 24 hour 
kind of approach, but we know that a lot of the way that Genesis is structured is j- structured in an old history poetic format. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said, I was talking about it wasn't as much scientific, but I think we, we stumble on that a lot. Um, and I wanted, I wanted the students to know, and I want everyone who's listening to this podcast, if you haven't watched the video, to know is that we don't have to compromise science and faith, that they can live together in the same world. Yeah. Um, and we don't have to be afraid to, <laughs> to, to learn like evolution or the big big bang or creationism that um l- indeed it does fit with scripture and the lord wants us to know um how his creation works so yeah definitely i like one of the slides you had said um the the bible's not a textbook mm-hmm. you know and um I, uh, there's a podcast I, I listen to every once in a while this guy named science mike and he he talks about um you know the bible wasn't written to for you it was you know it's centuries and centuries of people who have been reading it and studying the scriptures and for, for in the Bible to talk about, um, even something, something complex like DNA or, or Mm -hmm. whatnot, something that today we wrestle with, right. Um, for the Bible, for that to be in the Bible, like aliens or like, why does the Bible mention about aliens? Like for, for us, it'd be kind of weird to, to see the Bible mention aliens, but for somebody like, even a hundred years ago, just one century before, like it would be unfathomable right. for them. And so we have to realize it's not just, just our generation. It's many multiple generations before yeah, us. Absolutely. Even when it comes to like how the most, a lot of people they say believed the earth was flat. Um, which even there are parts, a lot of parts of the Bible where in God, like for instance, takes Moses up um, to the, to the heavens and shows him and it talks about, he saw the curvature of the earth. Mm-hmm. Um, that it's not necessarily that, that I think there are even that being said, I think there are times we give a lot of our ancients um, sometimes not enough credit yeah. with how intelligent and far off they were in a lot of ways. Um, obviously when it comes to like DNA and things like these aliens, I mean, they could, they still thought that we possibly um, revolved, the sun revolved around us. Um, these kind of different questions. And obviously there were a lot of people that believed in, in the flat earth. Um, but there's also some cool historical evidence of that, that that was used to use as a power move. A lot of people was don't, you know, try to push too far the limits because you can actually fall off the side of mm-hmm. the earth. Um, when there were a lot of people that believed that it could possibly, that it was possibly round. Um, and then even how God mentions in Job when he says, you know, have you he mentions the platices, you know, that constellation. Yeah. Um, cause the study of the stars is pretty extreme. We have a lot of, they've been studying the stars for a very long time. And even like the Magi that came to see Jesus when he was born, um, we're present day scientists mm-hmm. in their own regard, um, which we have actually, a lot of our science has come out of the Persian, the Persian empire. We, we, we still look at their books today as reference. It's pretty cool. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's not saying it's, I even was talking to a person who, who, um, his Bible literally means many books. Um, and so the idea that Genesis so some people, I think, uh, I saw some, I was looking into the, when I was doing the lesson, I was looking at some of the kids, and when I talked about Genesis possibly being poetic, but telling us, telling us truth, I saw some of them kind of, kind of pull back a little bit, because it almost sounds like maybe I'm saying um, not to take the scripture literally, um, which I absolutely am. I'm saying like, no, definitely take <laughs> what we're reading literally, mm-hmm. um, because literally it's saying God created the heavens and the earth. Um, it talks about the literal creation of of uh, humans and animals, but it isn't using words or terminology that would fit a science textbook that they might've had during the day or how they, I mean, like you said, especially in the ancient prehistory, there weren't magi even then of that level yet. This is, we're talking, you know, what was it? 200, uh, 2000 to 1500 years um, BC. So there wasn't that much record even at that time especially among uh, the Middle East in that regard. So, but um, anyway, I'm beginning to ramble on stuff that we <laughs> talked about yesterday. So, <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I, I definitely take in Genesis a little. I think that's the biggest point is that it's telling us that it was a st- oral story saying, mm-hmm. this is how we got here. Yeah. Created by God. Yep. And so we're going to go to, um, can I make one disclaimer? Yes, please. Just uh, as I'm realizing the uh, things I've said, about aliens i just want to make sure <laughs> that if anybody's <laughs> listening and it's like adam just said there's aliens <laughs> and i'm not saying i believe in aliens i'm saying when people say the bible doesn't talk about aliens is proof that they don't exist mm. I'm just saying it's not a definitive everything is not going to be explained in the bible right so well you know that you and i are the aliens 
we were planted here. There we go. Yes. Just some, uh, Mind blown. If you guys are ever late, up late on YouTube, <laughs> oh, I can give you some links. <laughs> nothing good can happen. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely some links. Um, but yeah, we're sp- we're planning on doing a whole semester on aliens next. So, um, yeah. So we got two questions here, which are actually some pretty interesting questions. All right. Can um, I present these questions to please. you? As you're, you're kind of the yes. Uh, well, you were the teacher, and yeah. so I'm kind of the, the, the panel host, and I'm going to ask you these questions and ask Hit you it, to. Man. Hit it. Um, <laughs> a, a student writes in and asks. They say, Luke, oh wise learned one. I like heard an Veggie argument. <laughs> what? It's like Veggie Tales when they're writing <laughs> yeah. the Bob. I heard an argument that God put fossils in the ground for us to discover and question. What do you say about that? It's a great question. I have heard that argument as well. Um, the argument itself, though, seems a bit odd. And this is and not uh, here, okay. F- let me first by saying, the God, of course, could do anything. This argument also goes with the idea that He created things with an appearance of age. Um, it's like when we look at we go to the Grand Canyon, you can go and look at the different strata in the rock of. Uh, we can go with the Antarctica. We can drill in ice cores. Um, pull it out ice has been frozen for just thousands of years and we can say oh there's definitely according to what we know about science currently there's age here we can see the layers we can actually see we can pinpoint cataclysmic events like uh, meteorites or when yellowstone possibly erupted by seeing in like north america in the grand canyon there's like the strata of the rock like large amounts of ash um, that is in the rock so it has this appearance has this appearance of age. Um, so some people said, well, um, a lot of kind of young earth creationists, I think that um, there is an appearance, there's an appearance of age in the term of uh, God, God, it's about 6,000 years old, but God then made it look old. That's why we can mm. register this. Um, so that question has been asked before. Now with the issue of like putting fossils in the ground, um, I would then ask what kind of fossils we're talking about. Are they like Precambrian? Because a lot of like what our oil comes from um, is not actually large mammal d- dinosaurs. It actually comes from uh, plant life and uh, like plankton style Precambrian life that existed on the earth for about a billion years previous. It gives most of our oil. Um, those can technically, are they dinosaurs? Did God put them there? We have a lot of fossil record of that. We have fossil record of a lot of different plants as well. Um, it just would seem kind of silly that God would put fossils in the ground logically because there's not really any other reason for them to be there except maybe to give us oil, to fertilize the ground. Um, he could have definitely just put them in there. But then again, why not just have like carbon, extra carbon in the ground? You know, why wouldn't God just make it the earth more carbon rich, um, which is essentially what fossils are doing in the soil. So good question. I just don't think that it necessarily is logical or makes much sense for him to do that. It's almost um, like, yeah, go ahead. Sounds like God would be, it's like he's pranking us, right? Like it's kind of, yeah, kind of like, <laughs> oh, check this out. God, oh, I got something that's going to make, <laughs> make those people really question and argue. It's like we went up to space and we're to go get near the first star and it's just like a giant light. It's kind of like <laughs> reflecting is not really, all the stars are just lights or something. Yeah. They appear to be stars. So, um, can God, can God do it? Sure. But is it logical or make sense to what we know about God and how he has created things under a con- We talked about constant physics um, in the lesson. Um, just doesn't seem probable to me. Yeah. So I don't know if you have, want to input on that. But like you said, God joking us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. The, the, uh, I don't see how it would necessarily, you know, it's, it's to go back to like, you know, Westminster Confession, confession you know, the chief end of man is to, to glorify God and enjoy him forever. And so, right. So obviously God's, you know, God is for his, his own glory. And so I don't know mm-hmm. how that points to God's glory necessarily. If it, oh yeah. Um, so yeah. You ready for the next question or are we ready for it? I think we kind of addressed this a little bit already. Um, this person asked, but Luke, what about the dinosaurs? <laughs> You never actually talked about the dinosaurs, <laughs> I love which I will question. say you did. You did mention dinosaurs. Did mention, um, I, like I said, my lesson title was misleading in that regard. Is that there was not a heavy focus. We talked about that. It was probably day three um, in the terms of 
probably the age or epoch, whatever that God created of the day, whenever God created these dinosaurs. Um, when we look at actually the time dinosaurs, um, for instance, dinosaurs that we think of like the T-Rex and the Velociraptor and Leoplerodon and all that, they existed in three different periods with the Triassic period, the Jurassic period, and the Cretaceous period, um, which spanned about 500 million years, which according to the earth is about 3.4 billion years, still is in a massive large part of the time. The majority of um, our time here on earth is the is Precambrian, um, which we had in the Cambrian explosion, which then started, uh, I believe it's six different periods. And then we hit the uh, Metazoic area, middle life is what they call it which is when so right about the middle of our term here on earth so far was the dinosaurs period um ancient life which would have consisted of about two-thirds of the earth's lifespan uh was the Paleozoic era and that um was a large lot of time when the earth was very hot very lifeless was void um scientists believe it looks something like venus um was then the moon was formed after a large collision with another planet, they believe. Um, so all this was going on for the first, you know, two billion years of Earth's existence. Um, it's pretty interesting when you think about the dinosaurs. They, they, they actually had a brief a brief time here on our planet. Um, and the Earth was very different. Um, if any of those who understand the idea of Pangaea and that we're moving by, you know, tectonic plates... The Earth actually was close, a little closer together in terms of land mass, and it was covered in these great shallow seas. Um, in these shallow seas, they allowed for larger. Right now, a dinosaur could not exist on the Earth because it would be too large. Its gravity would crush itself. It's, it would be too large that so we can't develop that big anymore. The largest thing we develop is you know, an elephant or a whale on water. You can do it because gravity has less effect. So actually, at that time, we have we know that the Earth was covered in these great shallow seas, and there was a lot of mud which helped the dinosaurs. I mean, dinosaurs didn't live on every part of the earth, but they did live, these larger dinosaurs lived on these great muddy plains that would go on for thousands of miles um, closer to the equator. Pretty cool stuff. You can look about that. So it actually allowed them to support their weight in this mud and these shallow seas. Um, and we also know the dinosaurs were probably not what Jurassic Park shows them as. Um, the T-Rex actually was Whoa, more wait, of a scavenger. <laughs> What's that? It's, it's not like Jurassic Park? That's not what they believe anymore, no. You're telling me Hollywood made something up. This is <laughs> unbelievable. Uh, I'm making, I'm making that, that statement, I think, yeah. I will go there. <laughs> Sorry if we have uh, angry parents writing in. <laughs> I will meet with you. <laughs> uh, but so we know it didn't look actually much like the T-Rex, for instance, was um, a scavenger, they think, because it had a large head mm. and little arms <laughs> and made it very arms. difficult to chase things down. Like the Velociraptor is pretty accurate, but also they were covered in feathers, they believe. They were yeah. bird-like. Um, That's bird something uh, I learned at the uh, the Prairie Fire Museum. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. I haven't <laughs> been in there yet. I've seen That's, that. You can make your own dinosaur, and uh, mm. and I take my kids in there, and my boys love it. And so one of the things is, do they have scales or feathers? And I thought, oh, I'm a smart dad. I'm going to put scales. Nope. I was wrong. <laughs> feathers. Oh, man. That's crazy. Is this a sponsorship for the Prairie Fire Museum? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> go check it out. Nine ninety nine. Get a free soda. <laughs> it's actually free. Free to go in and make your own dinosaur. But if you oh. want to look at anything, then that, that costs money. Man, if you want to like the real there. scientific stuff. I see they have a T-Rex in there. The bones. Yeah, yeah. And actually, a lot of the bones you see in museums aren't aren't actually bones. They're they're, they're they have a few bones that go in there, uh -huh. and then they they cast kind of the rest of the bones. Yeah. Um, there are a few complete T Rexes though. Mm -hmm. um, one came to the station. I don't know if that one in Prairie Fire is or not. I haven't seen it. Could be. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but anyway, back to the dinosaurs. They yeah they were covered in feathers and lived a short period. Uh, weren't the most stable of beings. We don't know. There is a lot we still don't know about dinosaurs. Um, still digging up fossils. We're not a hundred percent sure of what they looked like. But we definitely have a proof of it. they existed in some manifestation. Mm -hmm. um, and according to that, they died off uh, through about probably three different cataclysmic events. Um, one that we believe hit in the Yukon Peninsula down there in Mexico. And there's a huge crater that is part of the peninsula and also completely in the ocean um, that would have hit the, o hit the Earth, caused tons of stuff to go up into the atmosphere, caused the Ice Age... Um, which we are still actually technically in the Ice Age. Really? Know. Yes. We are technically still in the Ice Age, coming out at the very tail end of it. 
like for instance like Michigan and all those guys up there they were only formed they're they're really really new young lakes um, they've only been there something like a million years <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> which if you th- here's something like I heard from a scientist if you think of all the time of the earth on a, as a uh, 24 hour clock or you no know, if you just think of it as um, a 12 hour clock like a, you, that you have just a go around the dot there um, where humans came in about 200,000 years ago would be 1159 on the time of 3.6 billion years okay and then the dinosaurs were like 930 at uh, night so it's like still a long <laughs> period yeah. um, in terms of the earth's history before the dinosaurs showed up so they actually and they only lasted for about an hour hmm. so um they they played a part for some reason um, yeah. it's hard to say exactly what they and they weren't really our total oil issue either mm-hmm. we got a lot of our oil from i said like bioplankton and stuff so mm-hmm. just a so for i think and i think what main mainly people's question it is when they when they either are arguing against the creation story or are confused when they're reading the creation story and um, I imagine it's more in Genesis 2 where they, they see Adam naming, um, so God decides to make a helper, um, or, or he says it's not good for man to be alone, and so he, he, he's going to make somebody for, for man, and so he, he makes all these creatures, and, and um, Adam names these creatures and everything. And so, so the, the question is, like, that I hear most people ask, especially students, to say, like, the Bible doesn't say like when God created the dinosaurs and then if Adam's naming all the animals, then then you've got a case of, of human species and dinosaurs existing at the same time and from from at least from what we understand from history and scientific scientific history that man and dinosaurs did not live in the same periods and so so that's so how do, how do you how do you explain that when the Bible doesn't say clearly, or what people would say the Bible doesn't say clearly, when God made dinosaurs and and did dinosaurs and man exist at the same time? I would point to two different um, things we've kind of talked about. Um, the first one being this idea that in Genesis, every idea that... Well, like going back to the idea that, that it was that poetic in nature, they were talking about that he was creating um, these animals. Uh, God created the animals. Uh, we were to have dominion over them, the rulers of the animals, ruler of the garden, um, na- you know, naming the animals. But I think what he used there um, was the term of the domestication of the animals, of like so instance, like the ox and the cattle and animals that were that plowed the ground that worked alongside. Uh, humans to kind of develop um, the technologies that we would use to progress. Um, I don't think that every single animal um, was needed for the human to name. Um, we can say, did it name the snake? There's actually an interesting study about humans and snakes that are the reason that we have such great eyesight was because of us living near poisonous snakes in the early part of uh, in Africa, was where they believe the oldest humans are from. Um, being able to n- notice camouflage, we're really good at picking up patterns and things. Um, sorry, running off on that. Uh, but the idea of not, I mean, not I, mentioning when I, see a, when I see somebody wearing camouflage, I, I'm, I'm definitely instantly, I'm like, <laughs> you know, yeah. That guy needs some fashion advice. Deer can walk like right in front of us, and yeah, we, we like, no, I got you. Um, but so, I, I don't think that since the dinosaurs, we're not completely sure of their purpose. Um, there's been a lot of things that have been theorized of what their purpose was. Um, but to say that humans had to live alongside them, I mean, we obviously, by that case, humans would have had to do a, I mean, Adam would have had to do a ton of work naming animals. Um, all the things that swim in the sea that we still haven't even discovered or know about. I think it's just more simply saying he, he named the animals, especially the ones that he was with, and he, more so as saying we had dominion. Mm-hmm. Or these animals that we led them, and they weren't quite sons of God. They were created by God um, to do a purpose, uh, but I think it was more showing that authority, that authority level that we have over animals. Um, 
we can interpret that as you will, but I, I, I would I would stick alongside, okay, in the basic interpretation of that part of Genesis, we can say, okay, this is just sim- getting a simple truth in the fact that it needs to be, and then he named the cobra, and then he named the ostrich, and then, because there just would be two, it's not practical, it would take it a lifetime to just do that. And another point I want to make about that age group is that, so we know in Genesis uh, day six, uh, when the humans are created, and uh, e- it talks about, you know, this creating Adam and there was man and there was female, it says. Mm-hmm. And then we get in Genesis 2, I believe, is when we talk about then creating Eve, making a helper suitable mm-hmm. for Adam. Um, we know, it, then it kind of jumps back to day six. So it gives us like an idea, like, okay, and then it says, because then it goes into day seven and says, and that's when God rested. And then it goes, he needed a helper. So then we go back to day six where we know Eve was created. So the fact that he was living for a long time, when Adam sees Eve, the word he says is at last, at long last. Um, is, it was kind of like a, a jump for joy word in the Hebrew. So we know that Adam couldn't have just been like one day and then Eve is created later that day on the sixth day of a 24 hour period. And then he goes at long last, I finally like, Oh, I've been waiting for this woman after 10 hours of being mm-hmm. on this earth. We can kind of say from that the way Adam responds and also how it talks about Adam was naming and working and God noticed that he needed a helper for him the day six was much longer period than just 24 hour period because hmm. he talks about then recognizing the fact that he needed someone. And then when Adam finally meets Eve, he says at long last, mm-hmm. but we know from Genesis one that it was, and there was man, and there was female day seven, he rested. So we can right. say that there was some passing of time there. Um, logically, I guess, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> unless Adam was really just <laughs> needing someone <laughs> ASAP. He was really lonely. <laughs> So uh, hopefully that makes sense in that question. But yeah. I, I would just, instead of trying to make anything up, I, was, I would side with the idea that Genesis is just saying, give authority to us over the animals, especially the domesticated ones. Mm-hmm. It worked with it worked without them. Cool. Um, so that's the questions. If anybody else has more questions today for the podcast uh, uh, or anything that went on, uh, or w- I'll be putting up the lesson video, which you can share with uh, your, your friends. Um any, uh, anyone who wants to know more about science and God and thinks that there might be an issue there or your parents and uh, comment on the videos. We'll try to do our best to comment back if there's any more questions. And yeah. So. Yeah. Do we, uh, what's uh, what's coming up next Sunday? Do we know that? Do we have the. What? Um, <sighs> looking for around here for one of those schedules. I well, think I it, the, the schedule that we've got posted, I think with the. There is a new with one that snow was day. sent out with. The, okay. Do you have that one? Is it on? Is it on, that's not the one on the Facebook page? I think it was just put. It might be, and I think it's also been put on Instagram. Shout out to Molly; she's been doing a great job keeping up with uh, our Instagram. Here it is, I believe. Yeah. So next time is abortion. All right. Um, and I'm trying. I'm not sure who is speaking on that one. But that is definitely one we need that is going to be a more of a heavy heavy topic there. So bring your friends. There will be a lot to discuss. Um, I think it's actually one of Molly's friends. Yeah, I think it's Yeah. somebody. So it will be either recorded or we might do a live a live feed because she's not going to be okay. She's not in Kansas City. Okay. But Molly has said a lot of good things. She's got a lot of good experience about this issue. And obviously, it's not for less males. Uh, so, that'll be... So, we can all be doing now. So, uh, look forward to that. That is next week. And uh, look for also Molly's Devo tomorrow. Uh, for those of you that have been doing those, I've been doing those as well. They're great. Molly really puts together some, some great questions. Sent her some great questions on the lesson yesterday uh, that we can look forward and further this topic. So, by Wednesday when Home Church comes around, you guys are ready to dive in the Alpha. Cool. So say thank you to Adam, everybody. You're welcome. Right. <laughs> Everybody's welcome. All right. We'll see you next time on the podcast. All Bye-bye. Right. Bye-bye.